set free from the womb, the primal spirit dwells in the square inch, but the conscious spirit dwells below in the heart. This heart is dependent on the outside world. If a man does not eat for one day even, it feels extremely uncomfortable. If it hears something terrifying, it throbs. If it hears something enraging, it stops. If it is faced with death, it becomes sad. If it sees something beautiful, it is dazzled. Hi, and welcome to The Secret of the Golden Flower. Continued. Now, when a human being is born, he is born divided. Try to understand. There's the primal spirit, which lives in the Agnya Chakra, and then there's the conscious spirit, which lives within the heart, the physical heart. The Chinese say, the fleshy heart has the shape of a large peach. <laughs> it is covered by the wings of the lungs, supported by the liver, and served by the bowels. This heart is dependent on the outside world. In other words, how this heart, this earthly heart feels, the fleshy heart, depends on what happens, depends on circumstance. We become at the mercy of the conditions into which we accidentally emerge. I say accidentally <laughs> because of course, there's some deep causes behind it. But when we're first born, we don't know anything about that. We don't understand karma. We don't understand cause and effect. We don't understand the process of becoming, how we became what we are. We simply come out of the womb as we wound up being after the process of becoming. So we have to deal with that. And how we deal with it is by a gradual integration, a sublimation of the lower heart into the higher. This is the theme of yoga. This is the theme of bhakti, tantra, every spiritual path. Zen, chan, dhyan, <laughs> devotion. All these paths do one thing, one thing only, and that is sublimate the lower heart into the higher heart and awaken it. So the Buddha described the path like a man who is on the bank of a river being pursued by uh, people with swords and spears. Uh -huh. In other words, to stay on this shore is absolute certain death. The only escape is to cross the river to the other shore. And so somehow or other, we have to gather branches and sticks and leaves and whatever we can find and use vines to tie it up and make it into a raft. And by paddling this raft, somehow or other, reach the opposite shore. That's where the safety is. Now the problem is with most people, they're unprepared for this journey. They don't realize how difficult it is, how deep the waters are, how dangerous this shore is, and how wonderful the freedom of the other shore is going to be. So what happens, they start the journey then they get stuck. It's like there's this strange mixture of fear 
and attraction. Uh, on the one hand, we're afraid. We're afraid to remain as we are, divided, split into the upper self and lower self, into the, the heavenly heart and the earthly heart. We don't want to stay like that because it's suffering. Uh, it's terrible suffering. We want to become one. We want to become integrated. But as soon as we start, then there's this fear of, oh, I'm going to have to change. And I don't know what I'm going to be like. I don't know what life is going to be like after this change. Because it's a complete transformation. You have to go into the waters. And the waters may sweep you away. The waters will certainly sweep you away. Dissolve you. Take you downstream to the ocean. Maybe you become lost. Maybe you never find your way back. So what to do? Driven by fear. Fascinated by the possibilities. But at the same time hesitant because of the danger. So this is the situation. We're running away from the enemy and yet we're facing this danger this unknown danger of the path itself, of the master, of the instructions, of the process, and of the result. We don't really know how it's going to turn out, do we? So the mind craves certainty. The mind craves knowledge. The mind wants to know in advance how this is going to work out. <laughs> but you can't know. Nobody can know. That is the nature of the path. You are moving into the unknown. Not only the unknown, but the unknowable. Nibbana, enlightenment, release, illumination, awakening. These are all terms for the same thing. Going into the unknown. And the unknown is scary. In one way, it's much more comfortable to stay where we are because we know we're going to suffer. We have that much certainty. But if we go on the path, even that certainty becomes questionable. So, how to deal with it? We need this enlightenment. We need this nourishment. The heart is craving this spiritual manna that comes from above. But at the same time, we want it right now. We don't want to wait. Or if we have to wait, we want to know how long we're going to wait. I love this story that Osho tells about there's one saint sitting under a tree doing austerities meditations, japa, and so many practices like this. And Narada comes by. He says, you know, I'm just on my way to see God. You have any questions? <laughs> so the old yogi says, yes, I want to know how much longer before I get my liberation. Please ask. Okay. And just nearby there was another sadhu, a young man, and he's simply playing on his ektar and dancing <laughs> in great thankfulness, in great celebration. So Narda, while he's there, he asks him also, yes, would you like to know? Want me to ask God for you? He says, it's okay, if you like. Um, yeah, no problem. La, 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 la. He's just singing. You know the ektar? Doing, doing, doing. It's a really cool instrument. So uh, Narada goes playing his ektar. And then he comes back sometime later. And of course, the yogi is very eager to know how much longer I have to wait before liberation. Narada says, only four lifetimes. And he goes, four lifetimes? But I'm qualified now. I'm ready now. I want liberation now. Narada says, oh, sorry, that's, that's, I'm just telling you what he said, you know. And he goes to the other yogi 
And he's not much interested. He's just dancing and celebrating and alive. And Narada says, don't you want to know how long it's going to be before you get your liberation? He says, well, yeah, I guess, you know, if you want to tell me, <laughs> I don't really care. You know? And Narada says, well, as many leaves as are on this tree, that's how many lifetimes you have before you get your liberation. And the boy says, only that many lifetimes? That's nothing. Oh, this is great. Oh, I'm so thankful. This is wonderful. And he goes on dancing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Narda, Narda, by the way, is also called Bhagawan in the scriptures. Bhagawan means, it doesn't mean God exactly, although it's used to address the uh, avatars and incarnation. It actually means the fortunate one, one who is realized, one who is in ecstasy. So Narada is also called Bhagwan, but now he addresses the young man as Bhagwan, and he says, "Bhagwan, you're already free." <laughs> so you see, one should have patience. Patience, not like a rock. Hmm? The old man, the yogi, had patience like a rock. His patience was only good up to a certain point, but four lifetimes, that's too much. Because he had a very hard, fixed expectation that, oh, I'm qualified, I'm going to get my liberation now. Whereas the younger yogi had no such ex expectation. He was simply enjoying the journey itself. Because of that, he's already liberated. So when we first start this journey, it seems like such a long, long, long path before we get the result or before we even become qualified. But I'm here to tell you that everyone is qualified now. If you are aware, if you are conscious, if you're able to watch this and hear it, you are enlightened. Your awareness is your enlightenment. The heavenly heart is your enlightenment. You have only to recognize it, only to realize it. But if you're not able to do that, that's okay. <laughs> you're still okay, no problem. But you have to be patient. Not like a rock, but like water. Water wears away the stone. Why? Because water always infallibly follows its nature. See? Now, for the rock, that seems dangerous. Oh, what if the water sweeps me away and I go tumbling down the stream bed and I don't know where I'm going to wind up? Well, the water already knows it's going to wind up in the ocean. That's its nature, and it just flows down that way to the very limit, however far down it can flow. That's the nature of water. That's the nature of wisdom. That is the nature of the heavenly heart. It simply flows toward enlightenment. It flows toward consciousness, toward beingness. Whereas the earthly heart is, I want to experience happiness. I want to know what's going to happen. I want it now. <laughs> Not like a three-year-old. <laughs> and if it doesn't get what it wants, oh, it's going to throw a tantrum. <laughs> it's going to freak out. So it does further us. It does bring us further along the path to... Uh, follow sadhana, to follow meditation, to follow the secret of the golden flower, to turn around the light, to contemplate our awareness with our awareness. That is really the only instruction that you need. If you simply begin, huh? simply begin, just sit down without any plan, without any knowledge, without any expectations. And just begin to observe, 
contemplate. Contemplate what, you might say? Whatever shows up. If you feel anxious, contemplate that. If you feel impatient or ambitious or lusty or hungry or whatever it is, simply contemplate it. Flow down like water. Find the roots. See where it's coming from. Like Ramana Maharshi. People would say, well, how do I attain? And he would say, simply inquire, what am I? And he didn't mean like stupid people. <laughs> stupid people uh, start to have question and answer with themselves. What am I? I am the greatest. <laughs> It's all bullshit. It will never get you anywhere. Just round and round in the mind. Useless. No. But observe. Inquire. Hmm? If you do, you'll notice that every single thought has in it somewhere this idea of mine and I. I and mine. Right now, I'm looking at the camera. I am looking camera. See? And it's my camera. <laughs> this is implicit, isn't it? It's buried in the thought itself. It may not be obvious in the beginning, but if you look just a little bit, huh? just sit with it a little bit, be a little patient, not expecting anything, but simply like water flowing down, down, to the root, and then you find it. Oh, in every thought, in everything we say, there's some subtle egotism, or maybe not so subtle. <laughs> and not to resist it, not to try to stop it, but simply be aware. And the awareness itself is the transforming force. You can't be angry if you're aware. If you're angry one day and you just sit with it patiently and inquire it, who am I? What am I? What is this anger? As soon as you get to the bottom of it, you'll see. You'll understand. And you can't be angry anymore. <laughs> so this is the process. The process is pure awareness. Now, when you begin to get into this process, you're going to feel like you're in over your head. You're going to feel like the water is dangerously deep, like you could drown, like you'd be, you could be swept away. And it's true. Yeah. Awareness is like an ocean, not like just like a river. It's like an ocean, a great ocean with unfathomable depths. That's hard to pronounce. When you encounter this for the first time, I remember one time I was in Guam. Now Guam, the island of Guam, is right on the edge of the Mariana Trench. On one side of the island, you have these nice shallows, you know, from 10 to 30 fathoms deep. Uh, and you can easily, you can paddle around and swim and dive and go spear fishing and everything. A nice sandy bottom, very friendly, no, no strong currents or anything. It's really, really pleasant. But on the other side of Guam, there's a cliff that goes down at about a 70 degree angle. And it goes down for like 30,000 feet. 5,000 fathoms. And you can feel it when you dive on that side. One time I went diving off of a friend's boat. Whoa. You know, you'll be down 30 feet and there's schools of barracuda and baby sharks swimming over you. And meanwhile, you can hear, you can hear the depth it's hard to explain unless you've dived in a place like that. You can hear 
the size or the, the vastness of that deep, it's scary. Huh? Man, I could get bit by a shark and then never come up. You know? So it's the same way when you go into this ocean of awareness. Suddenly all these things open up and oh my God, this is big. <laughs> this is deep. This is way deeper than I've ever been before. So it's scary. Uh, but at the same time, remember, the enemy's waiting on the, on the shore. <laughs> Old age, disease, death, uh, rebirth, karma, delusion, ignorance, lust. They're all waiting there for you with their knives sharpened, <laughs> pitchforks in their hands. So you can't go back. You have to make it somehow. And even if you drown, even if you die in that deep, it's okay. Because now you're in awareness, you're in the water, you're in the wisdom. Remember, wisdom in, in Taoist symbology is water. Because it acts like water. It naturally flows down to the deepest place and finds the bottom. So, if you're sincere, if you're willing to have patience, if you're willing to sit with this, you know, that's why I, I don't give all these things right away in the beginning of the series. I wait because I want to see who has the patience who has the determination? Who has the intention to go through the entire series and even to go back and watch the previous series so that you understand our language, our background, our ontology? Then, okay, you can hear these things. You can understand. Those who simply come in off of a link on Facebook or something and catch one episode aren't going to understand. Sorry. They're going to be back on the shore watching, watching the dive and saying, I don't see anything. All you can see from the shore is, you know, the little paddy flag <laughs> waving. Somebody's down. Somebody's in the water. But you can't know unless you dive in yourself. That's why it's good to have friends. It's good to have a community. It's good to have a relationship with someone who's realized, who has been through all this stuff and can help you keep the right attitude. The attitude of courageous, determined patience.